Hi students, I'm Crystal Maldonado, young adult author of Fat Tans Charlie Vega and the more recent No Filter and Other Lies, which is a young adult contemporary story about the ups and downs of social media. It follows 17 year old Kat Sanchez and it covers themes like bisexual identity, the power of friendships and family, photography, the importance of self-acceptance, and it follows two adorable fat girls as they slowly but surely fall in love with one another. In today's craft video, we'll be talking dialogue. I personally love reading and writing dialogue. It can reveal so much about the characters. It can break your heart. It can reveal immense conflict. It can make you laugh out loud. But creating dialogue that feels real can be tricky, which is why today we're going to be answering the question, how do writers use eavesdropping to make their dialogue feel authentic? Before we get started, let's define a couple of things. Dialogue. Dialogue refers to any conversation that takes place between at least two characters. Dialogue tags. This is the text a writer uses to indicate who's speaking, usually using words like says or asks. Character action. What your characters do or don't do in between all of that talking. Now that we're good with our definitions, let's look at some examples of dialogue. In No Filter and Other Lies, there's so much talking. <laughs> when Kat's with her friends, she's often playful and sarcastic. But let's juxtapose that with the way she talks to her grandmother in these examples. I make it back to Marcus's car first, out of breath, but victorious. When my friends are within earshot, I yell, you guys just lost to a girl. You cheated, Hari yells, but he's laughing too. Not cool, Marcus says, rushing to unlock the car. We could have been ripped to shreds by Coyote while you saved yourself. Well, you better hurry up and let me in, I say, watching him fumble with his keys. In this next example, Kat's just gotten home from her night out with her friends and we're meeting her grandmother. What are you still doing up? I whisper. She wordlessly hands me one of the two mugs she's cradling. I breathe in and smile. Sleepy time tea, my favorite. It's nearly time for me to wake up for the day. What are you still doing up? Her voice is playful, not accusatory in the slightest. I give her a sheepish grin. Editing some photos? Ah, uh, she says with a nod. I should know by now that creativity strikes at the most inconvenient times. Wanna see, I ask. These scenes together show how Kat's personality changes, even subtly, depending on who she's around. The truth is we all change how we talk based on who we're around and the situations that we're in. How are some of the dialogue tags and character actions in this next passage used to create the shift in Kat's tone from sincere to irritated? Love you, I call to my grandparents as I rush outside with my bag. I hear my grandma yell, have a great day, chickadee, as I open my car door. I lift my leg to climb inside, but notice Luis's backpack in the way. Annoyed, I ask, can you move your stuff? Can you ask nicely, chickadee? Coño, not even a hello from this girl. Luis reluctantly grabs his bag and moves it down by his feet up front. Now that you're all in my car again, says Marcus driving, please let me reiterate the rules of riding in honey. I groan. Oh, here we go. Despite Kat rushing outside, she takes a second to call to her grandparents that she loves them right before she gets in the car with her friends. It happens so quickly that as readers, we get the sense that letting her grandparents know that she loves them is clearly a common occurrence in their house. Kat's tone immediately changes when she gets in the car. Luis is annoyed right back, which we see in both his dialogue and in the way he reluctantly grabs his bag. Kat doubles down on this feeling when she groans. Used together, dialogue, dialogue tags, and character actions all work to create a conversation that feels authentic, as if we're eavesdropping. One way you can get good at not just spotting these changes, but writing them, is to eavesdrop in real life. Next time you're in public, I encourage you to listen in on the conversations around you. As you listen, consider what phrases and words are they using? How do they sound as they speak? Does it feel like they're saying what they mean? Or is there some kind of subtext we're missing? What actions are they taking as they talk and as they listen? What do those actions then tell us about how they're feeling? Does their demeanor or language change as they talk to one person versus how they speak to another? Use what you hear as inspiration for your dialogue. Now it's your turn to practice writing some dialogue. Choose one of these two scenarios where the dialogue of your characters is going to shift. Option one, you and your friend are at a coffee shop and they've just run out of your favorite drink. How does your conversation go with the barista? How does it change once it's just you and your friend? Option two, you and your crush are getting some ice cream, but your little brother decides to tag along. How do you talk to your crush versus your sibling? Write some dialogue, including dialogue tags and character actions. Once you're done, read it out loud. 
hit pause here and get to brainstorming or save this activity for later and check out the rest of the Latinx Kid Lit Book Festival craft series videos on our YouTube page. We can't wait to see you at the festival. Happy writing!